Hello, I'm about to embark on my first ever solo expedition in Ivan, the camper van. And we are actually heading down to Portland today. Despite living in Dorset and being only about an hour and a half away um, from Portland, I've only visited the place once since I've been living here. And that was over six years ago, so I'm hoping to improve upon those first attempts with my photography. So let's fire up the van and head on down to Portland. Right, I've arrived. I've uh, set up the van, I've made it a bit uh, more level, which will make sleeping and eating a little bit easier. So just before dinner, I'm gonna just walk around some different points in the area uh, from this base, and I'll see what interesting compositions there are, get a better lay of the land, and establish where I want to return to and when, um, when and if the light gets any better. So let's head on out and see what I can find. So I've just found my first composition for today. It's very reminiscent of um, the Sycamore Gap tree up in Northumberland. That's why I kind of like exploring these off the beat areas um, in popular locations because you never know what kind of compositions that other people might not have found um, that, that are available and this being one of them. The, the sky is a little bit disappointing. So I've reduced the aperture down, down to F. Eight, that gives me a one two hundredth of a second shutter so that when I wait for the wind to die down it should be enough to freeze the tree. Two second timer and there we go. So I've just taken a few handheld compositions here. I quite liked, there's a, an old more property keep out kind of sign here, a bit of rusting on the kind of securing points with the kind of the Victorian prison in the background. So we'll see how well that turns out, but it looks like a quite an interesting composition. So you might think that I would have gone straight to the lighthouse or to Pulpit Rock, um, some of the most iconic locations on Portland built for some photography and I will get to those of course but I was quite interested to see what else Portland Bill had to offer and that's why I kind of like going to these locations and exploring off the beaten track and see what other people perhaps don't spot because they go straight to those locations and pass all this by so I'm really enjoying this part of the adventure and um, it started to spit a little bit so um, hopefully that will pass us by quite quickly Now obviously approaching the, the honeypot locations in Portlandville, the lighthouse which you can see in the distance and then off to the right hand side you've also got uh, Pulpit Rock so I'm going to go and have a, a look at them and before I start wandering back along the other side of the coast back to the campsite for some food so let's see what I can find. are at the famous Holker Rock at Fallenville. I'm surprised there's no other photographers down here but it's quite windy and I guess it's not quite golden out yet. What was quite hilarious is there's a, uh, a, a warning dangerous cliffs keep off yet yeah, there's a couple of fishermen um, in a precarious position. I'm going to take a slap of it with the with the signing because it makes quite a quite a dramatic picture I think. So, so, so I'll put it up now and see where you um, see what you think but yeah so I'm not sure whether um, 
having my tripod here with a long exposure is going to work at the moment because of this wind. It's, um, it's going to be difficult to keep the tripod and the camera still, so I might just take some handheld shots and see how they turn out. And then obviously because I'm here until tomorrow morning, if the wind dies down, I can have another go. But I'll put a couple shots up now of what I managed to um, achieve here. I actually think this is quite a good composition actually. You've got, obviously you've got the lighthouse and you've got some of its ancillary buildings and then also you've got these kind of like quarry kind of channels um, once in the kind of the landscape and it makes quite a good kind of leading line and a bit of foreground interest with the lighthouse obviously in the mid-ground and then also at the moment you've got quite some fast moving dramatic clouds in the distance so I'm going to try setting up a, a long exposure here because unlike before the only thing that's moving hopefully in my image is the sky and a long exposure here can make the, the sky obviously look a little bit more so we'll, we'll give that a go. So it's quite windy, but with the, I reckon it's a five second exposure for this. Let's do it well. a little bit of sun and opportunity for some handheld shots of the lighthouse through these triangular kind of shapes. Back in the van now, I'm just going to have a bit of a breather and a recharge and some dinner. Um, I won't bore you with B-roll with me making um, soup with a pre-prepared roll. But I really hope that the sun sticks around into the evening so I can get some really nice compositions from this, this great location. So as it's coming up towards 7pm, which is golden hour for today, I'm about to head out and see what the light is going to be like. Only 10 minutes into golden hour and you can already tell the difference in the light. It's just so much warmer on the landscape. So at the moment we're scuppered by some low cloud but there is some gaps at the bottom so I'm hoping for some light onto the lighthouse behind me so I'm gonna get set up and get ready just in case that light comes so I'm actually getting some really good light um, only problem is I'm, I'm not sure that this composition is as strong as it was earlier um, but I'm gonna do my best and hopefully what you'll see in a minute is the best that I've been able to come up with, so um, perhaps I should have got here earlier, but I'll know for next time. But enjoy the the following images for this um, for what's the last of this sunset, and we'll see what happens um, afterwards. So I finally managed to take some more exposure shots of pop and rock. I've got a three stop neutral density filter fitted because it's not too light and I just need a little bit of time just to blur the water slightly. It's pretty blown again now and there's some nutter stood on pulpit rock. I like this simple composition with the, the lighthouse and now the lights are on as well I'm getting some really nice um, really nice compositions especially in black and white actually you'll be really I'm really impressed with how well this is going to work like, I'll see I'll see if you can actually see me So 
so that's about it for today as you can see it's pretty dark now and uh, you only see my face because I've lit it up with uh, an LED light um, it's been quite a good day actually I've got quite a, quite a lot of good images I'm hopefully uh, very pleased with so I'm gonna take a walk back to the campsite now and then obviously or a careful walk back to the campsite and then if I see anything else which um, is worth um, capturing I'll um, you'll, you'll see it in a minute So that's it, I'm back in the van after a spooky walk back to the campsite in the night. Catch you in the morning. Morning, it's about half an hour before sunset, although looking at the weather, I'm not going to get too much of a sunset today. It's quite thick cloud and overcast, although I'm not complaining too much because I did have a good sunset last night. I'm going to go out and wander down the coastal path to see whether there's any compositions that are worth um, taking this morning. I might then as well wander up to the lone tree again to see whether the composition there is better this morning. Um, maybe the thick cloud will give a bit more definition in the sky than it did yesterday. And then I think that will do then for um, this adventure. Well, good morning. There is some light in the sky, so um, it might turn out to be alright um, this morning, which um, is, is a bonus. If I get anything, to be honest, I wasn't expecting anything. So, and as you can see, probably in the distance, there is some kind of light in the low sky. I definitely need to do more of this. It's so peaceful and serene out here in the morning. Sunset is nice, and especially if you have nights like last night where you get some really good light, but it's always going to be popular with people. You know, it's only really going to be really serious photographers that, that get up for the sunrise. So hopefully I'll get something here and um, you'll see it in a minute if, if I do, if, if not, I'll see you in the next uh, location. So this is probably going to be one of my last compositions in the lighthouse uh, today. It's not the best composition, but I've been looking around this area for a decent kind of composition and haven't really been able to find one so I'm gonna put some ND filters on here to try and create some drama in the sky and uh, we'll see what, what I can come up with. The wind's a lot lower today so I could probably get away with a lot longer exposure time so for instance I've just put a six stopper on the front of this along with a polarizing filter and that's given me the exposure time of 40 seconds so we'll see what, we'll see what we can produce. Might try a few different places now. There's a, a little bit of light creeping through the bottom of the crowds. Never say never. I've come a bit closer to the, the lighthouse and I'm getting a much better composition there with the, the rocks in the foreground, the crashing waves, and the lighthouse, and a bit of a glow of the golden hour in the distance. So I'm really hopeful that this composition is going to work for me. It's a great. It's a great spot, much better than the last one, because there's a bit more interest all through the frame. Again, I've got a 6 ND filter with a polarizer lens to try and cut some of the glare out on the, the C, and an F of about F8, F9, just so the exposure's not too long, so I can obviously take some more compositions. And um, yeah, and a low ISO to reduce the noise. So let's get shooting.
Right, I'm back at this location from yesterday, and I almost don't think it's as good as yesterday, even though in a minute or two the sky is going to be a lot better. You know, there's a lot of blue sky moving down, and it will give it a bit more kind of texture in the sky, rather than the, just kind of the greyness that I had yesterday. But for some reason, whether the light is just in a different position, it's just not falling on the tree as well as it did yesterday, or from what I can remember, but I'll wait around for the light to improve a little bit. I think I'm going to take the take a shot from back here as well. It always, um, it's always worth just looking around the area just to see whether there is a, a better composition. And I think today, with the kind of the rocks on the right hand side, and then this kind of path leading you out towards the tree, I think it's almost uh, the better composition today but like I said if you can see the sky is starting to improve even though it is uh, daytime now so we'll see what I can get yeah I'm really liking this uh, composition back here you've got a lot more of a kind of a lead in the rocks on the right along with the kind of the cliff edge jutting out and and then some foliage on the left just kind of framing it this side a lot very good and also there's a bit more interest in the sky today and I'll be able to really enhance that back in post yeah so I think I'm going to wrap this up soon because um, I'm quite hungry and I could do with a coffee just another shot the light's changing all the time so taking quite a few of these just just so that I can get the, the perfect kind of composition well, well I say perfect as good as I can get it I'm sure I'll be back because it's a great great location down here so many so many things to see and then with the light changing all the time it just throws up something different every time I'm really dialing down the exposure conversation is in some of these images to really focus on those highlights because the sky is really interesting at the moment um, I'm really liking that kind of composition that kind of low, low key monochrome composition looks absolutely great I'll probably give it a nice 6x6 crop as well really to kind of accentuate that kind of cliffside kind of structure and the hill to the left with the tree and the kind of the light cut across the frame I think it's going to probably be one of my best images that I've taken on this trip so just to recap I'm at a focal length of 20 which is equivalent to about 40 on a full frame camera I'm at f11 and that gives me one one twenty fifth of a second exposure time and of course I've turned the in-body stabilization off on my camera and also I've elected to turn on the monochrome profile too um, that the camera can produce a uh, two second timer and also dial down the exposure compensation to account for the, the sky and the kind of the composition that I want to achieve and then take the shot Well, I really hope you enjoyed that video and the content and the images. Let me know in the comments below which images you like the look of. I really hope or I will be doing a lot more of these videos now that I've done it for the first time and it can only get easier, right? And to be honest, it wasn't that much of a hardship anyway. The the van is great, you know, it's just kind of a complete self-contained kind of home stroke travel kind of vehicle. You know, you take you, it gets you to the places, and then you can eat, sleep, and um, just relax in this kind of space whilst taking taking the world in. So, thanks for watching again, and I'll see you next time.